Tom's Clean Air Force, and our Patrice Tomchak, and I'm the National Oil and Gas Program Coordinator. Welcome. We're just getting started. My name is Patrice Tomchek, and I'm the oil, National Oil and Gas Program Co Coordinator for Mom's Clean Air Force. I live in southwestern Pennsylvania. Mom's Clean Air Force is a national community of more than one million moms, dads, united against air pollution to protect our children's health. Here in Pennsylvania, we have nearly 60,000 members across the state. Mom's Clean Air Force is pleased to partner with Earthworks today to share and discuss their new analysis detailing the extent that Pennsylvania children are threatened by air pollution from the oil and gas industry. Here's an important fact I want to share with you. In Pennsylvania, 310,896 children attend schools or daycares within a half mile threat radius of active oil and gas facilities, putting their health and safety at risk. Again, that number is 310,896 children. As a membership driven organization, Moms Clean Air Force knows how important it is to bring useful science-based information to our membership in impacted states and also to you as members of the media. Today we'll hear from three speakers, including myself, who will each speak for about two to three minutes. If you have questions as the speakers are presenting, feel free to ask them in the Zoom chat. Please identify yourself and who you're writing for. After all speakers have finished, if we have chat questions, we will put the questions to the speakers in the order they were received and provide the questioner the opportunity to follow up. Then we'll open the floor to all questions. To start things off, I'd like to introduce our speakers. First, we'll hear from Alan Septoff, the Strategics Community Director for Earthworks, who will ground us in the significance of Earthworks oil and gas threat map and the central findings as they relate to children in Pennsylvania. Ellen will have approximately three minutes to do this setup and also visually demonstrate the mapping online tools available. Next, we'll hear from our speakers starting off with Laura Dagley, who is a nurse and medical advocacy coordinator for Physicians for Social Responsibility, who will discuss the health risks to children from oil and gas air pollution. Next, we'll hear from Lois Bauer Bjornsson, who is a field organizer for Protect Our Children Coalition and Clean Air Council. Lois fights for protections of children and communities impacted by the oil and gas industry. Lois lives with natural gas operations near her home and can share her firsthand experiences. Finally, I will share my experiences living with natural gas operations in my own community. Just as a reminder, after all the speakers are done, we'll open up this call for your questions from the floor. While speakers are presenting, feel free to ask questions in the Zoom chat. Please identify yourself and who you're writing for. We will wrap up speaker comments approximately 11.15 a.m. and then open up the questions and answers. Before we get started, I wish to point out that this event will be recorded again, and we'll include that link in a press release that will be emailed to everyone on this call following the webinar. We'll also include other important links, so please don't be on the lookout for that. All right, with that, I turn the floor over to you, Alan. Thank you, Patrice. Um, just to verify, you, you can hear me okay, yes? Perfectly. Okay, great. Okay, so as Patrice said, I am with Earthworks. Uh, for those that don't know, Earthworks is a uh, national environmental pro nonprofit that focuses on protecting communities and the environment from the uh, negative impacts of resource extraction, and in this case, that means oil and gas. And so to that end, uh, with Frack Tracker, Pennsylvania-based Frack Tracker, uh, and Viable Strategies, also Pennsylvania-based, uh, we created the oil and gas threat map. Um, and the threat map is a inventory of at the national, state, and county level of active oil and gas production facilities. And it maps populations threatened by those facilities. And I will uh, give a very brief walk through the map um, later. So in the map, it focuses on production, not refineries, not downstream facilities. It focuses on oil and gas wells, compressors, and processors, and active ones. 
And the source for this data is Pennsylvania state government for the wells and industry and state data for compressors and processors. Around each of those uh, facilities in Pennsylvania, we have drawn a half mile, mapped a half mile threat radius. That threat radius is based on peer reviewed science, mainly from a uh, University of Denver study, but there are others. To be clear, the health threat radius is not a bright line inside which you're doomed if you live and outside which you're safe. Within a half mile is the area in which negative health impacts are most clearly correlated with proximity to oil and gas production facilities. And that relationship gets stronger the closer one lives to a facility. Um, there are health impacts outside half mile. We've taken heat from inside the environmental community because some folks want it to be a mile, but half mile is conservative and supported by peer reviewed science. Uh, and the, the sources of that science are all on the, the oil and gas threat map website. So within that threat radius, we use census data and Department of Education data to see who, what lies within that area. And so what's news here? It's school impacts. As Patrice said, uh, for the first time, we know that there are 310,000 kids uh, attending schools and daycares within a half mile of these facilities. Um, the map also, uh, an earlier version of the map was released last year, uh, and this year has updated well data and updated population data, and this year it shows that 1.5 million Pennsylvanians total reside within a half mile. Uh, but the new news here is 310,000 kids attending uh, over 1,000 schools and daycares. And this is important now because the Trump administration's Environmental Protection Agency is in the midst of trying to eliminate existing federal safeguards that would reduce the pollution that threatens our health um, uh, with a rulemaking. They tried earlier this year to just wave away the rule, which is the existing law of the land, um, and that was rejected by the court. So now they are in the midst of a rulemaking to try and overturn the existing safeguards. As well, Pennsylvania, which if the Trump administration succeeds in rolling back safeguards, Pennsylvania's uh, responsibilities become all the more significant to Pennsylvania's health. Pennsylvania is in the middle of a debate as part of the, the budget wrangling uh, whether or not to implement its own state controls as the state of Colorado has done already. So in addition uh, to that information in the map, there's also uh, things broken down at the county level um, for uh, ethnicity, by ethnicity and by age. We also have on the map uh, and in the uh, press release uh, links to videos of the type of pollution we're talking about that's normally invisible and video interviews with impacted residents, including uh, Patrice. And uh, there is also uh, linked reports that show the impacts uh, in terms of elevated cancer risk and uh, ozone smog uh, that are also linked, but that is not new this year. Uh, I forgot to make that specific. Um, so the threat map, uh, let me show you that now. So let's go to the threat map. And here we see um, in the top banner are aggregate statistics for the state. It shows you 
uh, the total number of people in the threat radius, the total number of students within the threat radius, as well as uh, a host of other figures. One can search on a street address here, and there's also a link to take action to call the, the Trump administration and urge them not to roll back safeguards. The guts of the map, in addition to that search, is at the county by county level. So we can click on, let's see, um, county by county. And uh, when you select a county, these cards down here become active. And if you click on a card, it will show you within that county the total number of uh, people threatened in that county, those that live within the threat radius, and the demographic breakdown. Um, it will also tell you uh, the number of oil and gas facilities. And if you zoom in far enough, uh, it, the, what are the black dots uh, are actually oil and gas facilities. And you can click on one and it will give you the name of the facility and the unique API number so you can actually look it up. Um, and they're color coded by wells and compressors and processors. You can remove, you can focus on the information you want by clicking these checks. So the yellow is the threat radius, um, oil and gas facilities, and you can uncheck everything else to focus on what you want and in our case, um, uh, schools. Hmm. So we're having a bit of a lag here. Uh, let's jump out here. And um, you can click on schools and it will tell you the name of the school uh, and the daycare center. And the uh, and wh whether it is a college or university, whether it is a um, uh, public or prime uh, private primary or secondary school, and whether it's a daycare center, um, we also have data uh, that you can manipulate yourself on the media tab up top. Here, there is a spreadsheet that breaks this all down uh, at the county level, so you can sort and look for yourself if you so desire. So uh, I think I'll stop there. Um, and if there are questions or you want an individualized walkthrough afterwards, I'd be happy uh, to do that and put the map through its paces. But with that, I'll throw it back to Patrice. All right, thank you, Alan, for the important information and walking us through the oil and gas threat map. Now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Laura Dagley who is a nurse and medical advocacy or coordinator for Physicians for Social Responsibility. Laura? Hi, thanks Patrice. Um, so as a nurse, uh, all this data is very concerning because exposure to air pollution from the oil and gas industry uh, puts the general population's health at risk, um, but children are our most at risk population. Known air emissions from the oil and gas uh, drilling contain contaminants that have been proven to have short-term and long-term health effects, even at low levels of exposure. Along with methane that is leaked, chemicals such as benzene, xylene, formaldehyde, and hydrogen sulfide are released into the air during oil and gas activities. Short-term exposure to these chemicals can result in eye, nose, throat irritation, asthma attacks, increased risk of heart attacks in those with heart disease, and can cause acute bronchitis. Long-term exposure to these chemicals can lead to cancer and other chronic illnesses. But the reason that children are the most susceptible to the impacts of air pollution is because children inhale more air, therefore more air pollution, per pound of body weight than adults. They are also, generally speaking, um, spend more time outside than adults do. And children's body systems and organs are still developing, making them more vulnerable to toxins in the air. Um, asthma is also the number one chronic illness that affects children, and exposure to air pollution is a known trigger for asthma attacks. Um, children's health can be affected even before birth. Studies done in Pennsylvania found an association um, between living near oil and gas wells 
and lower birth weight in preterm births, which both come with their own complications. <clears throat> A study done in, <clears throat> excuse me, Colorado found an increase in congenital heart defects when pregnant mothers lived closer to oil and gas operations. Um, so you don't need a healthcare provider to tell you that it's important to protect children's health. Healthy children lead to healthy adults, and um, obviously the Trump administration needs to prioritize protecting the health of our children. Thank you very much, Laura, for explaining the health risks to children. Next is Lois Bauer Bjornsson, who is a field organizer for Protect Our Children Coalition and Clean Air Council. Lois? Lois, we can't hear you. Are you on mute? Uh, now, is that is that better? Yes. Can you hear me now? Okay, sorry about that. I apologize. Um, so, thank you again, Patrice. Um, I live in Washington County, Pennsylvania, with my my four children. Um, we are in uh, living in the most heavily fracked county in the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, currently, my home is um, surrounded by. Uh, at last count, up to 34 well pads. We have two compressor stations. Um, we also have two uh, pipelines, Mary East 1 and Mary East 2 is proposed, and a transmission line 75 feet on our property. Um, and all of the schools in our area um, recently, um, as last night I did a presentation um, with the local district, California School District, um, that they are stopping, are trying to stop a proposed well pad that will be next to the school. Um, Unfortunately, there are the high number that Patrice and Alan both mentioned of over 300,000 students each year um, being exposed to such dangerous chemicals as Laura mentioned with benzene and toluene and uh, ethylbenzene and xylene and then the nitrous oxides and the hydrogen sulfide as well as the smog. Um, so those are all, um, th those all hitchhike basically into our lungs and our children are breathing those in. Um, so what, what we are uh, trying to educate the community on is what they are um, able to do um, if a proposed well pad comes into place um, as far as setback, set, setback distances, real-time uh, airtime monitoring at the well pad, um, and hopefully not fracking during the, the school year um, and when students aren't there. Um, so the, the thing that we're finding um, is that parents are um, – at times uninformed um, about what is actually going to happen um, or could possibly happen to their children and their unborn children. So we do know that this, you know, this affects uh, 1.5 million people in Pennsylvania that live near a gas well. And then when you factor in if children are living by those gas wells and then they're going to school by those gas wells, they um, are just having um, an exuberant amount of exposure. So there's not uh, much getting away um, from this. So, um, one of the, the, the best solutions, um, actually, in another community that I'm working in is rewriting their ordinance, is trying to put in place in their oil and gas ordinance that industry has to monitor all of the uh, emissions that are coming off of the ball pad. So that's a, that's a wonderful solution if something like that could be done. Um, and this community is, is putting a foot forward to try and do that. Um, ideally, um, the oil and gas company is, is leaking numerous um, uh, revenue into the air. So uh, a solution would be to cut uh, the methane um, by being able to capture that and uh, therefore um, helping industry's bottom line and also um, helping our communities and our children um, that live amongst oil and gas. Thank you. Thank you, Lois. Thank you for all your work and your passion for protecting children. Um, finally, Thank you. yes, Finally, I would like to share with all of you my, um, my experience. So my name is Patrice Tomchak, and I live about 30 minutes north of Pittsburgh in Gibsonia with my husband and two young boys in Butler County. Uh, there's a natural gas well pad that's been developed 0 0.6 miles from my children's five school campus. And uh, this well pad puts my children and 3,200 students their health at risk for exposure to air pollution from the natural gas industry. In addition, there are five other well pads in our school district, along with pipelines that feed into the vast spider's web of pipelines that crisscross the state of Pennsylvania. 
throughout the Commonwealth, families and communities like mine are being impacted by natural gas industry pollution. Where natural gas is being drilled, compressed, and sent through pipelines, you'll find methane leaking along with dangerous co-pollutants and is putting Pennsylvania's children's health at risk. Natural gas air pollution includes the, the harmful methane and benzene, um, which has been talked about and causes the cancers like uh, childhood leukemia. For me, this is um, very concerning because my son had leukemia when he was three years old before natural gas operations came to town. And I know he has a much greater chance of having cancer again than the general population. As a mother, I try so hard to keep him healthy so cancer doesn't come back. However, I can't control the air my son breathes. For this, I depend on our leaders to protect him. And um, unfortunately, the federal government is working to stall and revoke those vital methane pollution safeguards that protect my children and all of our children from oil and gas industries harmful pollution. Moms like me across the state are looking to Governor Wolf to put essential safeguards in place to protect our children from methane and toxic co-pollutants from the oil and gas industry. Thank you all for listening to my story. Before we pivot to our moderated questions um, and answer session, I would like to thank all our speakers for sharing their insights, expertise, and experiences with all of us. We've gained a deeper understanding of the urgent issues oil and gas pollution brings to Pennsylvania's children and families. Before we start the question and answer, answer session, I'd like to introduce Justin Wasser, who is a consultant for Clean Air Council. Justin will help answer state policy questions should they arise. So let's get started with the questions. We'll take the chat questions in the order they were received, and then we'll open the floor to all questions. Hi guys, this is Molly from Earthworks. Um, I actually don't see any questions in the chat box. Um, so at this point, we should probably turn it over to folks on the line if there are questions. All right, are there any questions from anybody on the line? Any questions at all? Hey, Molly, is it possible that folks are still muted and can't unmute themselves? Hello? 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 Hello, please ask your question. Can we get some specifics from Lois and uh, also Patrice as to the uh, school districts that they're talking about? Which, which school district uh, do Lois's children go to and which uh, do Patrice's go to? Um, uh, Patrice, so, you want to go first? <laughs> sorry. Yes, this is Patrice Tomchak, and my children go to the Mars Area School District. Lois? So, um, my children um, go to a few different schools, but they live around uh, the Bentworth School District. The so, uh, rights are uh, held there now by um, an oil and gas uh, company. Um, also, Ringgold School District, Augusta School District, Fort Cherry School District, Bethlehem Center School District, and uh, soon to be California School District. Those are all in Washington County. Um, and all of my children are exposed to all of that, even though they go to different schools. They go to all the schools in Washington County, and my oldest goes to school in Beaver that will be exposed to the cracker plant. I'm I'm still uh, from from Lois. Uh, I, I'm I guess I'm under, not understanding exactly where your kids still go. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. So, so my children go to um, John F. Kennedy Catholic. They also go to uh, I have four children in different schools. So, First Love Christian Academy. Those are in Washington, Pennsylvania. My daughter goes to an, another school in Washington uh, County called St. Francis Children's School, and my oldest son goes to Lincoln Park. Okay. And Lincoln Park, okay. That's in Beaver. And they all have um, wells and well pads or other facilities within a half a mile? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, 
if there are no more questions, I'd like to summarize the importance of the oil and gas threat map as a tool to inform and mobilize people about the health risks from the oil and gas industry's toxic air pollution. In Pennsylvania, 310,896 children attend schools or daycares within a half mile threat radius of active oil and gas production facilities and they need protection. Unfortunately, the Trump administration wants to dismantle vital safeguards that would reduce this air pollution from impacting our children. Governor Wolf must act to put essential safeguards in place to protect our children from methane and the toxic pollution from the oil and gas industry. In conclusion, I'd like to thank all of our speakers for sharing their insights, expertise, and experiences. Also, I wanna thank media for participating and remind everyone that they will be able to access a recorded version of this webinar within the hour. We will be emailing everyone on the press, on the call, a press release that um, will have links with a few other, with the links to the webinar and with a few other links that will be helpful to your reporting. For any follow-up questions, you can either contact me at ppomchek, P-P-O-M-C-I-K, at momscleanairforce.org, or Ellen Septoff. Ellen, do you want to give your email? Uh, it is A Septoff, which is um, spelled with the first four letters in September, S-E-P-T, and off, like turning off a light switch, at earthworksaction.com. Org. All right, and that concludes our webinar today for the oil and gas threat map. Thank you all so much for joining. Thanks, Patrice.